In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a skeleton. Now we're going to add our skeleton to our crow model here. And let's turn off our textures. I'll just hit 5 to return to a shaded view. We could even prefer to switch to a wireframe, but we're going to stick with shaded here. And I'll show you why here in a second. Let's just zoom out back to shaded. Now I'm going to toggle the wireframe on shaded, that way I can see both. We'll make sure that we're in the rigging menu set. And we'll go to skeleton, create joints. I'm going to open those options, however. And when I start, I want to make the decision of whether to turn symmetry on or off. So this will allow us to automatically build both sides of our skeleton. Now I'm not going to start with the wing, but I will want to come back and turn this on when I'm ready to draw that so that I can have both wings drawn at the same time. So we'll leave that off and let's start just with the torso here. And I'm going to click to start at the character's hips. So that's going to be somewhere right around here. Now I'm in shaded view, I can't see it. But when we draw our joint in an orthographic view, it goes directly to the grid. So that means that it is now centered in my world. So if I were to take a look here in the front view, you can see that it is perfectly centered to the world. Since we modeled our character that way, it lines up exactly where we need it to be. I'm going to go back now to my side view, and I'm going to turn on X-ray joints. And that's going to allow me to see my joints through my shaded view. Very useful because I do like to see the shaded surface. I think it's easier. When in wireframe, it can get a little confusing. You might be seeing the wireframe on both sides of the model. Shaded view clips all of that, so it makes it easier. So I'm going to add another joint for the body, and I think we'll come up about here. Actually, let's move that down. I'm going to middle mouse and drag this over here, which is going to help me kind of center it a bit. So while I'm still drawing out my skeleton here, I can middle mouse and move those joints. Now if I click and hold my left mouse button, it'll allow me to interactively position that joint. Now I'll just drop that up there for the head. I'll probably come back and adjust these, but this gives us just a nice beginning placement. I'll hit enter to complete the skeleton. Now I want to draw one for the tail. And when I start this, I'm going to click on that root, and that's going to allow me to branch another joint right off of it. Create just a little starting piece, and then we'll add one there for the tail. Not going to do the wing just yet, because we're in the side view. We're going good. Let's add the leg. So I'm going to turn my symmetry on in the x axis. I'm going to click the root to start my skeleton, and middle mouse and I can drag that out. We missed our root there. Let's just delete that. We'll just start right here. We'll just parent those together when we're ready. Oh, I see what's happening. We're on our tail. Let's click out of that. And then I'll click right here. There we go. So now we're pulling, and you can see that right off of the hip. And I'm going to position this down here, kind of in the thigh there. But let's move this over, so I'll middle mouse and drag that out, jump back to my side view, add a joint there, and then we'll add a joint down there for the leg. Now they're not perfect, but I do have them on either side, and I can go in and make the adjustments as needed. Let's do the wing. I want to make sure I don't have anything selected so it doesn't start like it did there with the tail, starting with a joint that we don't want. So I'm going to click that joint. That is the joint I want to start with, and I'll click here. And I'm going to use my edge loops as I draw these out, because wherever I have an edge loop, that's where the model is going to be capable of deforming. So we don't want to put joints in between a big open face. There's nothing there that can deform. We can't break the face in half unless there's an edge dividing it. So we'll just click right here where all of our edge loops for the wings go. And that'll be good. I'll just go right to there. You can see my other side is built for me. I'll hit enter, and now I get my wings done. And maybe we add one there for the beak. He doesn't have a mouth, but if he did, we could bring out a couple more bones there and place those in there. 
let's position, come down here and take a look at the legs. Now notice when I select one leg that the other leg has a magenta color to it. This is because there is a connection between the two. And if I actually select it, you can see over here in the channel box, that's not the same color as everything else, but it actually even gives me a little note right there, connected via the symmetry constraint. That just means that when I select this one, this is the parent. This basically is the child. It's not a parent-child relationship. There's an actual constraint between the two. But when I move this one, the other one is going to move. Now, instead of trying to select this joint here, I'm just going to hit the down arrow on the keyboard, and that will pick walk down to that joint. Let's go into perspective view here. Push that over and turn on x-ray joints for that viewport. That's positioned there pretty well. Let's turn on wireframe on shaded, and we'll go back to our joint tool. I still have symmetry activated, and just want to make sure I have nothing else selected. We're in perspective. We don't want to draw joints in the perspective view. It's okay to start. We can click on this joint right here and then pull it off. But when I draw them in the perspective view, it can be difficult to see where it's actually being drawn. So that wasn't too bad, right? But what if I'm just kind of over here and click? So that just kind of goes off into empty space there. You don't really know where it's going to be. And usually it's not where you want it to be. So I can click this guy here. Then for my next joint, I'm going to go into my side view and finish it up. And it's okay to toggle between views in order to do this. So we'll drop one there, and then we'll drop one there at the end and hit enter. And now that gives me the middle toe for both sides. I can choose control D and just duplicate that skeleton over. But unfortunately, that's not going to duplicate the other side. I'll actually undo that because these are pretty easy to draw. And we'll just select that. I'm going to stick with the side view only because that orients my joints properly. And I don't want to select right on top of those. So I'm just going to go right above them, hit enter, and I'll just translate these down. And then we can just click on those and position them. So now I've got a bunch of joints stacked up on top of each other. I'll just use the up arrow key and then slide those over. Position those properly. And we could do the same thing for the other toes. And then I would come back in and do another pass just to make sure that the joints are aligned with geometry. They look like they're part of the skeleton and that they are in a position that would be natural for that skeleton to move in. 